Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is next smallest palindrome and it is a hard level problem. So personally, I don't like these kind of problems. For example, in this particular problem, the implementation is not very difficult nor does it require any algorithmic knowledge. It says that it's a puzzle that we have to solve which may be of hard level but uh, it does not require you to have any special knowledge or any knowledge related to data structures or algorithms, right? So I believe like if there is a hard level problem, it should have some sort of algorithmic or data structure knowledge used in it. So anyways, let us quickly start with what the problem says. It says that we have been given a number in the form of an array, right? Consisting of n digits. So each of the digits will be from one to nine and our task is to find the next smallest palindrome which is strictly larger than the given number, right? So this is our whole question and uh, the size of the array can be 10 to the power 5, right? And we have to find the next smallest number, which is a palindrome. So this is completely a puzzle type of question, which you have to solve. And uh, let us discuss how we can solve this problem. So I believe like uh, there would not be any doubt in the question itself because the question is very simple. But let me just uh, quickly tell you, if you don't know what is a palindrome, so palindrome is one in which the characters are in this particular format where the first character is going to be equal to the last character. The second character is going to be equal to the second last character and so on. In general, any ith character is going to be equals to n minus i minus one character if you are considering zero based indexing. This is what a definition of palindrome would look like or in simple words, you can also say that uh, a palindrome x is equals to reverse of x, right? So both of these would be equal if you reverse the whole array, you will still get the same array, right? So I believe that is uh, more than enough about a palindrome. Now we have to form a palindrome, which is just greater than the current number. Just greater means that among all the palindromes that exist after the current number, it should be the smallest, right? So there are multiple ways of saying the same statement. Now, uh, let's say I have a number like this, right? Let's say we have these six places in which we will have digits at each place. Normally, when you would want to find a smaller number, you would always start from the rightmost position, right? This is always true because if you update any number at this particular position, it would have the least effect, right? That is what we call the place value of any digit. That means, for example, if there were, there were some characters in these positions, right? So there are these five positions and there is this one position. Let's say there was x here and I switch it to x plus 1. So the difference that will be created will be of value 1, right? Now similarly, let's say, let me just erase this and let's say I had x here and I converted it to x plus 1. Now the difference that will be created will be equal to 10, right? Similarly, if I do the same thing at this particular position, instead of writing x, I write x plus 1, the difference that will be created will be of 100. So this is what we mean by the place value of any digit. For every question like this, where we want to minimize any number, we always start from the rightmost. But you see, there is a problem in this particular question that does not allow us to start from the rightmost place, right? And that is, if you switch this particular number to any other number, at the same time, you will also have to change this number, right? So you will have to work with both of the positions together because you want the numbers at these positions to be the same. Right. So if they are same, they, they are going to change together. And if you are changing the greatest digit, then the whole number is going to get affected by a lot. Right. So in this particular scenario, it makes a lot of sense to start anything from the middle. Right. So this is our very first observation that if you want to make any change, we would always want to start from the middle. Right. So there is this one observation that I have that is start from middle. Right. Now, before trying to form the smallest number, let us try to convert the current number into a palindrome, right? So how can we do this? Let's say we again have these six places, right? And let's say I'm at this particular position. Now let us consider a case where this particular number is less than the last num. So let's say the array is nums. So nums of i is less than nums of n minus i minus one. Now, how do I make them equal? There are actually two ways. The first way is to make the first number equals to the second number and the other way is to make the second number equals to the first number, right? So if I change the first number equals to the second number, you will realize that 
in this case, in this first case, my first number is going to increase, right? And since the face value of this particular number is a lot more than the face value of this particular number, my overall number is going to get increased by a lot, right? So you see in this particular case, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For each unit I change here, the result will be affected by 10 raised to the power of 5, right? So this is not very good because I wanted my number to be as small as possible, right? So instead of changing the first number to the second number, I would change the second number to the first number, right? Nums of i. So now what I'll do in the second case, let us assume, let us assume that nums of i is greater than nums of n minus i minus 1, right? So again, I have two possibilities. The first possibility is that I change my first number equals to the second number and the second possibility is that I change the second number equals to my first number. So if I change the first number, then it is going to be smaller than my current number. That is something I definitely don't want because I don't want my number to get smaller. I wanted a bigger number. So there is no way I would want this number to become a smaller number. So the only path I have is to change the second number into the first number, right? So again, I will do the same thing. Nums of n minus i minus 1 is equals to nums of i, right? Now you might be wondering that in both the cases we did the exact same thing, then what is the benefit of having the case work, right? If we are doing the exact same thing in both of the cases, then why deal it separately? Now you will see that there is actually some difference between the two. So let's say we have these six digits like these, right? So these two numbers are associated together, right? These two numbers are associated together. So let's say we are considering the first case. Now, if you are considering the first case, then in this particular case, nums of n minus i minus 1 was initially a bigger number. Now we have converted equals to nums of i, which is actually smaller. So if there was a number x here and I'm converting it to x minus 1, then the whole number is going to be smaller than the original number, right? So you see what is happening. Let's say, let me just put an example here. Let's say it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 1, right? So we have made both of these numbers equal. Now these two numbers are not equal and the first number is less than the second number. That is what our first case is, that nums of i is less than nums of n minus i minus 1. Now in this particular case, if I make this number equals to 2, then it is going to be, let me slide it clearly, now this number is going to be smaller than my original number no matter what because it was initially 5 here. If I make it 2, this is going to be smaller. Even if, even if the last position had a number 9, it doesn't matter. It is still going to be smaller than the original number, right? In this case, I know that I still need to make some changes, right? That means I can mark my change variable. Let me have a variable called change. I will mark it as 1 here. Right. What is this change variable denoting? That means I have performed some operation here and now I want to make some change further to make my new number greater than the original number. Because if I don't make that change, my number is going to be smaller than the original number which I got in the input. So this change variable is going to denote that particular information that I need to make some changes here. Right. Now, let us consider the other case where nums of i was initially greater than nums of n minus i minus 1. So let me invert these numbers. Let's say 5 was here and 2 was here, right? So if I make the second number equals to the first number, right? If this number also becomes 5, then no matter what number is present here, no matter how small it is, the whole number or the overall number is going to be still greater than my original number that I got in the input. Right. So, as I mark change is equals to 1 here or change is equals to true here, I can also mark change is equals to false here. Right. So, this is the benefit of having two separate cases. You see that the modification that we are making is the same in both of the cases, but the effect that it is having on the final answer is actually different. Right. In the first case, our number is going to be always smaller than the original number. That is why we are saying that we still need to make some change in order to make our number greater than the original number. Now, similarly, 
I am marking this as 0 that means my new number that I have formed will always be greater than the original number that I had. right? So, after I have done all of this, this for loop starting from i is equal to 0 will execute till i is less than n by 2 Why? because I can go up to n by 2 and I will be able to consider all the pairs that I have in my original array. Now that I have considered all the pairs in my original array and now that the number is a palindrome, right? I have converted the whole number into a palindrome. Now I will have this change variable either equals to true or false, right? Change is equal to false means that I have already been able to make my current number or the new number that I have greater than the original number. If it is equal to true, that means I still need to make some changes so that my new number becomes greater than the original number. Now my whole number is a palindrome, but if change is equal to 1 or change is equal to true, I need to make some changes in order to make that greater than the original number. Right? Now the question is how do we change the number to make it greater than the original number? We come back to our original observation which says start from the middle, right. So we will come back to this observation that said start from the middle and we are going to start from the middle and try making some changes. Now since the rest of the number is already a palindrome, we are always going to change the numbers in pairs, right. So if I am changing this number, I am also going to change this particular number, right. So let us see how we can make the changes. So if we have something like this, let us say there are uh, these 6 digits and let us say this is 1, 2, this is 2, 1 and this is uh, 1, 1, right. Now let us say the value of change, the value of change in this particular array is true or is equal to 1. That means I want to change the sum value in this particular array so that it becomes greater than my original array. Now as I already discussed, I will always start changing from the middle. So I can change these two elements to 2, right. As soon as I change even one of the digits, right. I will be able to make a number which is greater than the original number, right. So, I am always free to change any number, but if I want to make the change minimal, I would always want to start from the middle element, right. In this particular case, I was easily able to increment both of these by 1 and I was able to form my final answer. Now, let us assume a case where these two elements are equals to 9. What will happen in this case? If I try to increment it, obviously it is not going to be any number greater than 9. So, I can try to make them 0. So, if this is 0 and I leave it as it is, then this new number that I have formed is going to be smaller than my original number because my original number was like this, right. And if I leave it like this, this is going to be smaller than the original number, right. I do not want this. So, instead what I will do is I will keep these two as 0 and I will update these two as 3. So, from the middle elements, I am trying to move outwards to both of the sides. Now, since I was able to update these elements, I do not have to make any change further, right. But let us say, let us say we have a case like this. In this case, I was able to break the statements, but let us say there is 1 here, there is 9, 9, 9, 9 and 1. Now, again, I will do the same thing. I will convert these 0 and I come to this position, I try to increment them, but I am not able to increment them. So, I convert them to 0 and I come at these last two positions. I see that I can increment them. So, I will convert both of them equals to 2. Now, again, let us discuss one last case and that will be it for this video. So, again, if I have all of these elements and all of the places are 9 this time. Right. So, what will happen now? I can make these two 0. Understood. Then I can make these two 0. Then I can make these two 0, but what will happen now? I cannot move further. So that means if I am in a situation where I have no elements left and I still want to make some changes, then in that particular case, what I can do? I can convert this particular number to 1 and append a 1 at the end of it, right? How does this make sense? Let us consider a small example where I only have 9. So I converted it to 0. And I observed that I have no places on the left as well as on the right. So, the next number in this case, it is very easy to see is going to be 11, right. Let us consider some bigger case 99, right. So, in this particular case, the next number is going to be 101. So, in this part, it is just pure observation that if all the elements were 9999 like this, then I have to append a 1 at the end. I have to make this first element equals to 1 and all the middle elements equals to 0. So, this is always going to be the next element which is also a palindrome and also greater than my current number.
So that was it for today's video. I know that it is a very long puzzle and uh, it might be quite hard to understand. If you missed some part, I highly recommend you to watch this video once again. It's not a problem if you were not able to understand it in your first attempt. But if you watch it a couple of times, you would definitely be able to understand all of it. Right. So now let us have a look at the code which I submitted. So you will see that I have initialized a variable called change and it is initially equals to true. Why? Because I have got my original number and I want to make some changes in it. Right. So what I do, I just uh, traverse through i equals to 0 till less than n by 2. I check if my current number is less than the second number. Right. I will mark my change as equals to true. Otherwise, if the first number is greater than the second number, I will mark my change as false. In both of the cases, I am going to update my num of n minus i minus 1 is equal to num of i. Now, I am going to initialize my answer vector. Since they want us to uh, like return a vector and they have given us array input, I would want to initialize my answer vector separately. And at each step, I am just updating answer of i is equal to num of i. Now, I have initialized my carry variable, which is going to uh, tell me whether I have to make some changes or not in the next number. Right. So, my carry is equal to change. You could have also used the same variable change here. It would not have been a problem, but I just uh, did it while submission so that I know that this variable is a bit different and it is storing a different type of information, but to taking one variable is totally fine as well. Right. Now, I have initialized my int variable with n by 2. This denotes that I am currently at the middle position. So, I am going to continue this while loop when carry is equal to 2 and int is less than n. Right. Both of them, both of the conditions should be satisfied. Then only I will get inside this while loop. Now, if my current index is equal to 9, I am going to set my current index and my index n minus ind minus 1 is equal to 0. Otherwise, I am going to update my current index and set my answer of n minus ind minus 1 is equal to answer of index. Right. So, in this case, I am setting both of them as 0 and in this case, I am incrementing both of them to the equal value. Now, if I get to this else condition, I will also update my carry is equal to 0. Because I have found a state where I can increment the value and I don't need to carry this change any further. Right. And both of the cases, no matter what happens, I am always going to increment my index. Now, at the end, if I have exhausted all the elements and my carry is still equal to true, then I will update my answer of 0 as 1 and I will push back a new one at the end of the answer vector. And then finally, I can just return my answer vector as the answer. So, this was all about today's problem of the day. Now, let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this is absolutely correct. So, you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you are one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always subscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So, share this channel with your friends and till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.